Hi, and it's me once again. Today is Thursday, September 15th, I believe. And it's a beautiful evening out here and the weather's a little bit cooler and I'm under my umbrella in the in my um, little patio in the back. And I'm out here once again. I have in front of me, which you can't see, is a lot of books, my iPad, etc. And reading the Word of God, I just can't get enough. And, and um, I'm reading about the Foundational Truth by Derek Prince. Once again, I'm just, I am just so hungry and on fire for the Word and can't get enough right now. And while I'm sitting here, I am getting the Word in my spirit resilient. So I'm going to pose a question to you. What does that mean for you? And it might take a second to kind of just marinate in that, but I end up looking up the word in the dictionary, resilience and resilient, and what it was saying to me. And I pondered on this for a while, and I probably still need more time actually to soaking it because I know there's more to come. And being resilient is I don't want to say it's being elastic, but it's being stretched. It's um, it's going through perhaps an illness or a trial and being bent and um, and then rebounding. And that word kind of kind of stuck in my head for a little bit. Because the Lord is stretching us, and I just don't want to return to who I was. But I want to be more. And I want to be forever changed. So, like a lot of others, in these past two years, I have been absolutely on the stretching board. Continuously, non-stop. And it's proven to change my character and who I am and my belief system in, in my own mind where the enemy comes to attack. So how resilient are you? So when the enemy comes or to steal, to, to take from you or, or change your mindset, confront you, or if you're asked to intercede, praying for someone who's in need, we're prepared. We are repaired that we do not, we, we've gone one step further. We are forevermore changed by Him and by the Holy Spirit indwelling through revelation of permanent change. And I would assume that's what we all want as Christians is permanency in Christ, stability, foundational truth of being immobilized by any false doctrines, uh, spirits, um, or any other influence that is not from the Holy Spirit and God. We're looking for truth. We want to stand in it. So all this uh, trials, etc., that we're going through, and here's the other thing, I believe, and through a lot of friends and speaking to you, I just see that God is using tools such as an activity that we might enjoy, relationships, um, jobs, um, and some other things, objects, um, your time, that he's using these items and situations to not necessarily that they prosper and they bloom, such as um, I'm presenting my art to an art gallery and hopefully to get in there. But during the process, I may not. And so I think the final goal is what we see, whatever's in front of us, that we want to accomplish it to get there. And we think we're there now. We've been stretched and we're supposed to get to that point in that destiny. And I think, uh, I'm going to say I may have this a little wrong that it's not about that final step and going, it's the process. And he may be using this as a process that when I do my art, I, I 
I do with the Divine Lord and we co-labor doing it together and I am in the intimacy of the Lord while I'm doing it and speaking and talking etc. Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. Um, that it's like a train moving and whatever happens during that train and, and the destinations and perhaps like and I know I just jumped sorry um, the stops along the way and you get off the train and enjoy the view and a dinner and, and maybe um, as a tourist what you're going to see and you hop back on the train again till you get to your destination and so I think if that makes sense I think he is using all these things to stretch us to to bend us to get where he wants to go but he's using these as tools to increase us and it does not maybe look like that all the time or feel like that and there may be disappointments along the way there can be um, a lot of in our in our soul in our flesh we don't understand and he knows that but the wisdom will come with it as we keep going we have to keep pressing forward and expecting the good and expecting and trusting that God knows what he's doing and so I don't want to say we're oblivion or blind to what he's doing but it's an obedient act that you will do what I say when I where I say to go what I say to do to get to a point which we don't know what the destination looks like because it's forever going on it's eternal it's eternal so I believe the Lord again is using for each and every one something different in their life to get them there he may use for me like cooking cooking has kept me and baking in my home for nine months um, praying being with the Lord, spending time with Him. Uh, my prayer life is 10,000 times better than what it was. My closeness to the Lord, hearing from the Lord, obeying, uh, breathing out His Word, blessing others, uh, loving on others, falling in love with people um, as He does and as He sees them. And this is true and genuine. And I didn't know that that would be the destination or His will. I'm in His will. I we just maybe not see that but we are and we're in it and we're doing and not being passive but being active and being active is sometimes being at rest total rest and peace with the Lord we you know there's a lot to be said with this so we're not going backwards we're going forward even though at times it seems like we're stuck and settled we're not we're in the spiritual realm moving forward. So I bless you today. I hope that's a great word for some people, um, more so than not, and that you're blessed by it. And um, I hope to see you again real soon and we'll speak then. In the meantime, just keep on. The Lord loves you and you are special and made for great things. Bye-bye.